Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of Where the Heck Are the Albans and Where the Heck Are the Albans. This is actually part two of our vlog uh, from the uh, Museum of Science and Industry uh, in Chicago. Uh, part two is going to focus on something called the Fairy Castle. Uh, this was a uh, basically a humongous dollhouse that's basically shaped like a castle um, that was designed by a 1920 silent movie star and uh, it's her private collection uh, so enjoy and here is part two the fairy castle at the Museum of Science and Industry so I think we are gonna go see the uh, the fairy castle now my favorite thing in the world Wow! So, that spinny thing, I want to ride in it. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely go in there, but we're going to do that after we eat, I think. So, Fairy Castle first. We got to go over there. Are we going to be able to And we are on our way to see the Fairy Castle. <laughs> that is actually her. That's the lady that built the castle. Here's the castle right here. Oh, they took out the little phones. They used to have phones where you could, they would tell you the story. Those are real books on that shop. A dictionary. This was given to Colleen Moore by her father when she was only five years old. It is what started her whole collection of things. That's the dictionary. There right are a there. lot of other printed books in the library. Right there. Many of them over 150 years old. Now we pass on to the room above the small hall. This is the cave of Alibaba and the 40 thieves. The treasure is reached by a trap door, which opens only if you say the magic word. I know. For some reason, it's not talking. Right on the altar, right there, there is a little piece of glass, and it's supposed to contain a sliver of the actual cups. <laughs> You are now looking into the fairy castle's great hall. Outside, above the room, is the good fairy welcoming you to Fairyland. Below her are figures of Cinderella, the prince, and the wicked stepmother. The floating staircase in the center of the room has no railings because fairy folk balance themselves with their wings, and should they stumble, they simply fly away. The ceiling of this great hall is painted with scenes from the stories of Hans Christian Andersen, as well as Grimm's fairy tales. Over the door, at the back of the room, is the Pied Piper of Hamlet, with the children climbing up the wall to get him. The knights in armor, at each side of the door, are silver and came from the collection of Rudolf Valentino, a famous motion picture actor of the 1920s. The tall glass windows at the rear are etched with fairy tales. Jack and the Beanstalk, The Princess and the Seven Swans, and Prince Charming. In the rope dark sections are treasures of fairyland. To the left and on that low rosewood table are Cinderella's glass slippers. They are hollow with high heels and have tiny red glass bones. These are the tiniest little glass slippers that have ever been made. Next are the silver skates below the way in the back of the room, the green pedestal. A statue are statues of the goddess Isis, and they be over 4,000 years old. And the fourth, a Syrian vase, is thought to be over 1,000 years old. To your right, behind the ropes, is a Battersea enamel table, 
and mines, and then sprinkled with golden eggs and beside it a goose. These, of course, were stolen from the giant by Jack. On the next table is a small pistol. In actual shoes, open the door for those little kids. And to the right, Jack and Jill toppling down the Look at the floor. It was made in China. I like Here's this house. It's of rose quartz right. and jade. The chandelier in the center of the room is gold, hung with real diamonds, emeralds, and pearls. To the left, you can see a little chess table just waiting for the people to come and play. The painting on the wall is of Cinderella. The vases on each side of the door going into the great hall are made of carved amber that is over 500 years old. They came from the collection of the Emperor's Dowager in China. The next room is the dining room. King Arthur's round table in the center. Beside the gold plates are wee knives and forks, also of gold. The glasses are crystal, and most of them are over a hundred years old. The tapestries on the wall, which are needlepoint made in Vienna, are the smallest stitches that have ever been seen. You can hardly see them, even under a magnifying glass. Upstairs is the bedroom of the prince. This room tells the story of the Russian little Tsar Sautur. The story is carved in the furniture. The polar bear, of course, was shot by the prince. It's really an ermine sign. The bone has teeth. The sword stands where the wardrobe is next. Next to the bedroom is the bathroom of the prince. It is made of alabaster. The mirror over the shell-like wash basin is gold set with a sapphire surrounded by diamonds. The gold Japanese chest is about 500 years old. Now look up in the roof of the house, and there we see the attic. This is filled with all the things that were left over from the different rooms that belonged to the ancestors of the prince and the princess. Above the dining room is the bedroom of the fairy princess. This bed is the one that Sleeping Beauty slept in. The bedspread is the gold spider web that covered her for 100 years. The chairs are platinum and set with real diamonds and emeralds. The floor is made of mother of pearl. Look above the kitchen and you will see the bathroom of the princess. The crystal walls are etched to tell the story of London. The tub is made of silver and the real water flows from the dolphin's mouth. And now we proceed hungrily down the stairs to the kitchen. Open the door by the three little pits. And to the right, Jack and Jill tumbling down the hill. The copper stove in the back of the room is the stove in which the wicked witch locked Hansel and Gretel. The set of China on the table has the Queen of England's crest on. This is a doll house like this, huh? <laughs> yeah, see, I would have no place to sleep. It's like as big as my room. I know, right? <laughs> you need a whole new room just, yeah. just for the doll house. So this is Colleen Moore. She's actually the one that made the doll house. So... She was one of the highest paid actresses in Hollywood in the 20s. private collection. That's actually a portrait of her that was specially painted in 1926. A miniature sketch of her. These, uh, this crate is all rubber lined and it was used to uh, transport the fairy castle's contents around when uh, it was on tour around the country.
they uh, they had to redo the whole castle, and this was uh, kind of them redoing everything, and they redid every room. They polished and they shined everything. But uh, here's like a few things. This is kind of before and after. Very, very cool. So down here in the lower levels, there is the food court. Uh, you grab a tray and basically pick what you want. So you got healthy options like salads, but they've got burgers and whatever you want, pizzas and so forth. So we're gonna let's, uh, go through here and find out what we want to eat, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so that was our vlog on the Fairy Castle at the Museum of Science and Industry. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, tune in tomorrow, and uh, I don't know what actually what's going to be on for tomorrow, but it's going to be something else that was at the Museum of Science and Industry. Um, so if you liked what you see today, uh, or saw it today, uh, proper English, of course, uh, give us a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to subscribe down below, and we will see you guys next time on Where the Heck are the Alvins? Bye-bye. <laughs>